Hello. In this video we're going to be covering some of the help features and how to navigate them in QImage Ultimate. The help is located in the standard location in the menu up here. If you click help you'll see that there are different ways to get to the help here. I'm going to start with contents and show you that the main help comes up with different sections here labeled based on what section of the help you'd like to go to. The one that I always recommend for new users is this getting familiar section. So let me click on that. What that brings up is basically a textual version of a lot of what we covered in the getting started video. But if you're on a laptop, you're not connected to the internet, this could be useful um, to see what some of the sections of the window are. They're labeled here and then they're covered down here in the text. So it shows you the layout of the main window on how to use it. If I click back here, go back to the index, there's a learn by example section as well. And in this section, there's a host of different examples on how to do certain things. Um, if you want to review images prior to selecting them, let's click on this one. You can see the step by step on exactly how you do that. So if you follow these steps you'll learn how to do different things. Go back here one more time. The other important section to know here is the listing of major functions. If you click on that you'll see that pretty much every function in QImage Ultimate is listed here in alphabetical order. And you can just pick one like I'll pick edges, click on that and you'll see how to mark the edges of your prints. Uh, the search feature also works pretty well, but let me show you how to use that because some people get confused on this or don't know some of the features on how to search. My last search is already in here so I don't have to type it, but I'll type it again anyway. I'll type layouts. If I want to know something about layouts, type it, click list topics, and it'll show you the different sections that that word showed up in. And let me click on this Learn by Example first. If I double click that, the Learn by Example section comes up with all the word layout selected. I can see that there's an example here showing me how to create a layout. I can just click on that and here is the example. Um, here's a little trick. If you're in this window and you want to go one by one to each word layout that was found, just click in here and type Control F on your keyboard to bring up the search box and then type the same word layout and then do next 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 it goes to every instance of that word layout that it finds and it highlights it so that's how you can scroll through them it found it also in the queue image functions here uh, let's scroll down a little bit we see that this one's the first one in the index here that's highlighted uh, it's talking about optimizing layouts that shows you the full page editor and how to arrange prints on the page. So that gives you an idea of kind of how to navigate the help and then content section. Remember we got there from here, help contents. Um, there's another area here of help called context sensitive help. And that's more of a hint based system that's designed to remind you of functions that you've already read about in the help. If I click that to turn it on, then anywhere I move my mouse, you'll get a hint that pops up. And some of them are kind of long like that. Um, but they are, are basically giving you enough text to remind you of how to use these features. Each one that you scroll over with the mouse, it'll pop up a, a little hint for it. I don't, re I don't recommend keeping this on because as you can see, some of them are a little longer, they get in the way. So only use that to remind yourself of different features. Let me show you one other feature here. It's a powerful feature, uh, the help feature that you can use to get directly to exactly what you want. Wherever you have a function where you can place your mouse in there and highlight the function, I just clicked on edges here. If you click on the function and then press F1 on the keyboard, it goes directly to that help, mark edges. 
Let me show you another one as an example. I'll bring up the print properties box with a right mouse button hold. Click the mouse in the border field here, border size, and you can see it's highlighted. Press F1. It goes directly to the help for borders. This will work anywhere in QImage. Uh, open up the editor here. I can click uh, any one of these things. Let me go into the unsharp mask here. Click my mouse in there to make sure that that field is selected and then hit F1 and the help for unsharp mask comes up. So this is a quick way using the F1 on the keyboard to go directly to the help that you need. Seems to be a forgotten feature in a lot of other programs because even the high-end photo editors don't employ the F1 help system and back in the 90s when we had DOS and we actually remembered how to use our keyboards, F1 was a popular way to get right to the help you need. These days it doesn't seem to be used very often, but once you use it, you realize how powerful it really is. Any feature you want. I'll go to the printer ICC profile here, click in there, press F1, and it brings up the help for color management. So use F1. Uh, whenever you can, whenever you can place your mouse in something and select it, yeah, F1 will work. There's one other thing I wanted to show you before I end the video. If you get yourself into a bind, uh, sometimes you can have things set in the program that you don't realize were set. Uh, you might have excessive margins on the page set or something like that. There is a way that you can get QImage Ultimate to check your settings for you and see if there's any conflicts. If you click Analyze Current Settings, it'll go through potential conflicts to see if you have any. Now, I don't have any here. It says no potential conflicts. Let's just create one. I'm going to go into Edit, Preferences, and I'm going to go to Page Formatting and Page Margins. And I'll enter a negative 0.1 in the mar top margin here. I'm doing something a little bit naughty. So let me click OK on that. Now, the, the, the margin doesn't show here anywhere, but if you click Help Analyze Current Settings, it tells me I have a negative margin and uh, can be useful in some situations, but you generally shouldn't use it. So would you like to clear the margins? Yes. And that takes care of the problem. If I do it again, then I get no potential conflicts. So these are just some powerful help features that will help you learn the program, get through the program, um, check to see if there's any issues you might have, and I hope this helps you on your way and will shorten the learning curve for you a little bit, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.